There is going to be a total reset in the world. When I mean a total reset, yesterday I made a video how Trump's presidency is going to affect so many things in the world. How it is going to reset so many policies, how it is going to stop so many things that are not good in the world. And this is part of what I'm saying. Now, you can see this uh, news from the Newsmax, and it reads that Hamas calls for war's end after Trump's victory. Hamas has been fighting Israel. Iran has been using Hamas, Hezbollah, as proxies, you know, to fight the state of Israel for so many years. Now, Joe Biden has not demonstrated strength. He has not demonstrated that he can, you know, broker peace. He has not demonstrated that he can sanction all these countries or, you know, negotiate with them for them to stop all these uh, wars that they are, you know, having in the Middle East, including the Russia and the Ukraine war. But an emergence, Trump has not become the American president, but at the, you know, election, which is the president elect, but not the administrative president now. So if maybe he was elected, Hamas made the call that they want to stop the war. Why do they want to stop the war? And that is the reason why I always tell my Nigeria friends that every insecurity we are having in Nigeria, it is because of the kind of leaders who are aiding the insecurity in one way or the other. If the, the election of one man that has not entered office, the almighty Hamas terrorists are now calling for peace. That is to say that there will be a total reset in the world. And I can tell you categorically that the reset has begun. You can see how so many things in stock markets, the Bitcoin is rising. So many things are just resetting, totally resetting. The future has another chance to make it right. Well, Donald Trump is not a perfect human being because there is no perfect human being on earth. But he has a lot of things he will change. This article is from uh, Newsmax. They reported today that Hamas called for war's end after Trump's victory. And it reads that after President elect Donald Trump's victory on Tuesday, a senior Hamas official called for an end to his war against Israel. Newsweek reported Wednesday. The election of Trump as the 47th president of the USA is a private matter for the Americans. But Palestinians look forward to an immediate cessation of aggression against our people, especially in Gaza, and look for assistance in achieving their legitimate rights of freedom, independence, and the establishment of their independence sovereign state with Jerusalem as its capital. Hamas political bureau member and spokesperson Bassam Naim told Newsweek. Hamas has been at war with Israel since the terrorist organization killed 1,200 civilians on October 7, 2023. The United States has been criticized by Hamas for enabling Israel's mission to eradicate the group by supplying the government with weapons and intelligence. The blind support for the Zionist entity Israel is fascist government at the expense of the future of our people and the security and the stability of the region must stop immediately, Naim said. During Trump's first term, as president, he nurtured a close relationship with Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and Trump achieved significant milestone to further Israel's interest. The Abraham Accords, signed in 2020, formally normalized diplomatic relations between Israel, the United Arab Emirates, the Bahrain. Trump also moved the United States Embassy in Israel to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv, thereby recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital city. Netanyahu was the first world leader to offer his approval of Trump's Tuesday victory. Congratulations on victory's greatest comeback, Netanyahu wrote. Your historic return to the White House offers new beginning for America and a powerful recommitment to the great alliance between Israel and America. This is a huge victory in true friendship. This is what Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, wrote. He was the first person to congratulate Donald Trump when he emerged as the president-elect of the 47th United States President. Now the article continues. Trump has vowed in the past statement to bring peace to the Middle East if elected to a second term. A senior Hamas official, Sani Abu Zuri, told Reuters 
after the U.S. election, we all strong to learn from President Joe Biden's mistake. Well, what kind of mistake did Joe Biden make? Joe Biden, people see Joe Biden as a weak president. They see Joe Biden as someone who is supporting Israel and not trying to make peace in the Middle East. But remember the Abraham, uh, the Abrahamic Accord that Trump broke up between Israel and the Middle East. So, apart from this, I remember vividly how Trump was also interfering against the terrorist attack on the people of Nigeria. A lot of people will say, oh, no, 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 Trump called Africa a state hole. Putin also called Africa a burial ground for their politicians. It's a sad reality, but the truth must be told. The shithole hole could know something. The burial ground called by Putin also could know something. Our leaders are the major causes of everything evil we are seeing in Africa. And they could be right by saying that Africa is a better ground. When Trump, when Trump made that statement, he explained what he made. That African politicians buy houses abroad, they go vacation abroad, they go hospital abroad, their banks in abroad, but when they die, they will bring their home to bury. That is a better ground. And when Trump means a shit hole, it means where all the whole rubbish comes in without you know resistance. People keep on tolerating their leaders and so on and so forth. I'm not trying to defend that. I think that is an abusive words from the two most influential world leaders. But what I'm trying to say is that Trump stood against insecurity attacks on innocent people, especially Christians in Nigeria during his tenure. And he was warning Nigerian president, he was withdrawing support to states that were sponsoring terrorists against their people. So these are the things the world is waiting to see. There, there, will, be, there will be a great reset and it's already happening in the economy of the world. The inflation is going to stop drastically. So many things is going to stop. Russia and Ukraine is going to stop. Middle East is going to experience a little bit of relief. In Africa, countries like Nigeria will be able to come out to say, oh, we are being killed because we are Christians. We are being killed because we are minority and they will see a world power that will listen to them. I am telling you from experience what Donald Trump has done when he was president. We look forward to seeing such thing. I am a coach happy myself. Let me know your contrary opinion about this video on the comment section. Thank you. What I saw the Obama regime do, and which Biden tried to extend, was attempts to recreate the values of right and wrong for the rest of humanity. The amount of investment that government made on um, gender issue, I mean, uh, what do you call it now? LGBT. LGBT. It's never been done in history. The attempt to redefine gender, to redefine humanity, to push it all over the place. Then the pro-life and all other values of um, Trump. I noted that combat because it's been of interest to me for a long time. The moment Biden took over, you may recall that I wrote an article on the back of this day titled, As Biden Shows His, Shows His Hand. It was the same set of paradigms. And the issue for us is this. What is it that we've gained on that? So you find that Trump is aggressive, no mm -hmm. question about that. Some would say on box stores, you know, clearly a riot on his own. But in the end, what does he represent? He represents some of the things that the core conservative America has been interested in. After Reagan left office, his, his uh, chief of staff, Martin Blackwell, set up the Leadership Institute for only one reason to recreate conservative, conservative American values and to ensure that those who pass through that institute, just like NIFT in Nigeria, are gotten into the State Department and the core agencies. And part of the values being pushed there are what Trump, without any liaison with them, was doing. I was in that place in 2012. So the point being this. A government that could say, don't say Merry Christmas, is inclusive, it just says season's greetings. Mm must be a government that doesn't believe in God. And it's not about being conservative, being timid, being extremely religious. On what basis did that government set out to redefine what we are? So Trump came on, complete with what? Unappealing in self-presentation and everything, but there was something that drove him on. Now, he was also abrasive, was not too welcoming to outsiders. Now, that Trump is the externalization of the feeling of the basic and average American. Namely, if you and I walk into the U.S. today, immigration doesn't feel happy seeing us. That's the truth. But they have to be nice about it. You mean it. seeing you, not me. Us. <laughs> <laughs> because... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I understand, <laughs> you know. So, the, the whole thing that everybody is trying to be politely mm. nasty. The man says, no, this is my backyard. I decide who comes here. So that element is there. Right. And I am not surprised at the victory because, you see, it means that more and more people have courage to be honest. 
Some people are seeing it as a progressive dismantling of America. I would say, what is there to be dismantled? A reality that everything was, everybody was pretending is not there is now being unveiled. Mm. And the custodian, or if you like, the, the patron saint of that is uh, Donald, um, Donald Trump. Right. Well, in any case, we're just hearing that um, both uh, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris have now called President Trump to congratulate him because she had uh, decided she wasn't going to speak today. And she probably still, I understand she's going to speak at about 4 p.m. UK time. Mm, okay. uh, I mean, sorry, uh, 10 p.m. UK time, so I, I think, um, which, which would time. be sort of, you know, 4 p.m. American time. Yeah. Uh, but in any case, um, they've, they've called to congratulate him. But all the things you were saying, of course, reminds us of what a fractious election this has been, this has been mm -hmm. and points to the deep-seated divisions in America. Mr. Trump has talked about healing those divisions. Do you believe he can or he's going to deepen those divisions? He will deepen them. I, from experience, we've seen him as president, we've seen him as president who lost and didn't want to go, mm. and we've seen him as president con 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 contesting, as a candidate contesting for this one, and throwing everything while contesting. He's likely to deepen those divisions, not because he's setting out to deepen them, but because he will be so strong in affirming his own convictions that people, many will see that there's a gulf between him and them. Now, the question then will be the ultimate impact of those things he's doing. That's where our attention will be. Mm. But talking about healing, I think we are familiar with Trump's kind of healing. If he gives you medication that's not good for you, and you don't take it, he says you're stupid. If you take it and it doesn't taste nice, you say, no, something is wrong with your taste buds. So that's the kind of healing we'll expect. But I would say about time too. And in terms of reducing the fractiousness of these elections. Is there likely to be a sigh of relief in America that the victory seems so clear and is not blurred by being too close? Because, I mean, literally the day after, it's been called for Do Donald Trump. We've heard that Biden and, you know, mm. Harris have congratulated him. Whereas in 2020, it took several days before a clear winner was Emerged, declared. Yes. Yeah. Now, this, this in itself is very revelatory of the American soul at this moment of the historical hour. The same um, Trump who lost, mm. the same Trump who was alleged to have actually wanted to probably take over violently, the same Trump who was indicted, the same Trump has received more votes than the vice president of an immediate past government of a different party. Yeah, but the vice president, who is a different individual, yes, only this, had three months to campaign. I mean, Donald Trump has had since 2020. Yes, but she's, not, she's also part of a party platform that had been in power and had projected a certain perception mm. of America and a certain set of core values. And so he comes on. The same person that was practically in Fredig, all of a sudden, he got real votes more than the other candidate. Mm. That suggests a new thinking. That suggests a slightly more honest America. That also suggests America we should become a little more worried about because he's going to be headed by a Trump who is a bulldozer, even though I like him. He's going to be headed by a Trump who is serviced by a parliament that he, his party dominates. Mm -hmm. So anything he sends across is like saying to his child, look, I don't want you to be on this seat. Move over. The boy will obey or the girl will obey. Now, that's a Trump. And that's a perfectly perfect um, recipe mm. for global danger. And, because, and, and, sorry, finish what you said. Because he's likely to get endorsement. Right. When it's only his acolyte are there, he's the party that owns it. He has shown a capacity for swallowing his party. He did that before. Nobody thought he would get the ticket that when he did it. The first time he became president, he got the ticket. People chuckled. Nobody thought he would win. He won. Mm. Misbehaved thoroughly after losing. He's come back, he's bounced back in a frightening way and with a lot of political and legal leverage. Um, so he's likely to be a little less manageable, quite right. frankly. And, and that's, that's, that's what worries people. And you use the term global danger. Yes. Um, there is, of course, the war in Gaza. Um, he said that he wants that war to end quickly. But again, he gave no details. So there was an absence of detail. But according to the Israelis, he called them 
to congratulate them on their operations in Lebanon. Can we therefore assume that if he were to bring that war to an end quickly, it would not end in a way that the Palestinians and the Arab countries want? It's easy to, it's easy to infer that. Um, we are looking at a man who, from our perception, has already taken sides. Mm. To that extent, the end of that war, knowing his usual temperament and disposition, will be, look, just deal with these guys. They are causing too much trouble here. We have other things to do. Sweep that, sweep that place out. <laughs> you know, that's, that's basically the kind of thing we are likely to see. And we must see beyond the question, of, it's not about Gaza and Israel. Mm. It's about the soul of America, which belongs to the Jews. If you take away Israeli scientists, Israeli businessmen, Israeli funding, Israeli management of the U.S. economy and the military and science, there will be no America. Mm. So people have always wondered, what is it that um, these people are always doing? Every small thing, America, you see them to be on the side of Israel. They help them have great an Israeli state. Those undercurrents are not lost on Trump. It was an Israeli. I remember he created a, 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 what you, a marketing chain of sale or return. He won't ask you to pay for anything. He'll come to your shop and drop it. He'll come back in a day or two or a week. If he's not on the shelf, you give him the money and was able to. They're creative people. They constitute and compound the core of those values mm. and skills that enable the American state of today to be what it is. If you look at the number of Nobel laureates who have Israeli or Jewish heritage, the number of people with that heritage who have dominate different aspects of the American state, Silicon Valley, you will understand that if Trump, if he sees American interests as synonymous with the survival of the state of Israel, like he said, he'll just use insecticide on the place. And what about a country like Nigeria and, and the rest of Africa? Would Trump be good for the continent or would Harris have been better? Was Harris, what did Harris, Biden and Obama do for Nigeria or Africa? You said the man is from Kenya. I wouldn't argue about that. We have history, we have factual evidence to that effect. What did Obama's tenure do for Africa? What did the continuation of that tenure under Biden do for Africa? Well, Agoa was strengthened under Obama and, and, and there were quite a few um, Africa summits that were held well, thank in Washington. You. Thank you. We've walked into, two of us have walked ourselves into a, a, what I was looking forward to, summits on Africa, at Goa. What you call, um, there's a word for it, abstract gains. Oh, there's this summit on how to develop Africa. There's this summit on the needs of African states. There's an increase in aid mm -hmm. to support development, to fight corruption, by a country that if you and I, anybody moves in $5,000 into the U.S. banking system is flagged. They'll know where you are, where you're coming from. Billions of Naira are moving out of this country, converting into hundreds of millions of dollars into the U.S. economy and that of Europe. They know the owners. is driving the economy. That's not corruption. It's to come here and give us lectures and support anti-corruption agencies. So that fraud has lasted long enough. Let's not deal. That's why I say, what was it they delivered? Oh, summits on Africa, you know. If Africa leverages its massive human capital, it has a lot of arable land, it can feed the whole world. It's a speech in a hall. That swindle, I got familiar with it as a lecturer in the university. You listen to those who speak ideals. After that, you know that outside that hall, the fellow doesn't have a single follower, but he believes he has proposed a solution to everything on the planet and probably two other planets apart from this one. That game they've been playing with us has lasted long enough. We need somebody who will look and say, look, you guys, I think you're stupid, really. If you don't do this, you're not going to see me. That's the kind of thing Trump will tell Africa. And on that uh, very sobering note, I, I, I want to thank you very much indeed. It's always a pleasure to get to speak with you. Professor Oke Ikechuku is an international political analyst, the executive director of Development Specs Academy, a member of the editorial board of this day newspaper, and a professor of strategic management and human capital development. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Charles.